So then we get to the House of Black, which is Malachi and Buddy, our friend Buddy, against Matt Seidel and Christopher Daniels, who, to my knowledge, have they ever teamed up in this company together on television? I mean, they have known each other for years. They're both veterans, but... Uh, but they had a big run in 2004 with uh, Orangutan Pro Wrestling. Oh, come on now. So, uh, that again, cold match for the House of Black to get over, and they do. They beat Chris Daniels. And then the music is playing. Their music is playing because they won. And the lights go out. And then FTR's music starts playing. And, they, and now they get spotlights and shit, and they enter. And Malachi Black starts talking, and I was trying to listen to what he was saying. I was trying to make notes on the point of what he might have been saying to them. And it for and then I, I, I said, wait a minute, is he one of these guys that speaks different languages in his promo? And I, but then I realized, no, the words are English. He w did he start like saying something that he had prepared in his mind and he fucked it up and he started over again or something? I couldn't follow what the fuck he was trying to get out until finally he assumed that they were there to join the House of Black. Why would he assume that? <laughs> I had the same thought. Why? Why? Where has this been established that there was an offer made? And and maybe it was on fucking Rampage. Who knows? But And then he said the House of Black have been there for both of you. When? When? I, I, I mean, I know we haven't watched this. When I hid that gun in the Everglades for you. Hey, quit now. There's absolutely no proof of that whatsoever. I helped him. Well, in, in, if, unless there's somebody that can testify to it. But again... We haven't watched the program for the past couple of weeks, but we haven't heard of any of this interaction. But he didn't say any of it very clearly, did he? Did you notice that he no. was just... First of all, I know what I noticed was his accent went away. <laughs> I was like, man, he sounds like... He has no accent whatsoever all of a sudden. It doesn't sound like the same whispering, spooky man. Like, all of a sudden, it all went away, and that threw me off. And then he was just talking gibberish, and again... I assume you're here to join the House of Black. We've seen this a lot, too. I assume you're here to join my bullshit faction. Like, that's happened multiple times. Even though there's no uh, reason for me to believe this. But again, FTR, their career has been lacking great angles and great heated rivalries that aren't built around who's better in the ring. Which is, unfortunately, because of who's been booking them for... Most of the time, they've been a team. Uh, but at the same time, everybody else gets the, to do their own shit. I do, why, are, why are Dax and Kay... Why, are, why does Tony hate them? Why are they in the doghouse? Why does well, Dax lose every single match he ever has except the one against Cash? Why well, some of this do they go have... away for long periods of time? Well, I think some of the stuff we do see on TV, you have to ask yourself how much of this is what they want to do. Because they are doing it on collision. Well, I can see him calling the finishes a mile away and, and laying the matches out and calling the matches, but why would anybody in the wrestling business want to do any of the interviews and angles that they have ever done? So they're still baby faces. That Midnight Express knockoff music hits, big pop. Because people think of the Midnight Express. Big well, pop no, still. Come on. Big pop. They come out there, they're fired up, they get the fans fired up, and then they just stand in the ring like, patsies well that's that's where i was going with this next because whatever the fuck that malachi black dribbled out with his verbal effluvia out of his yapper he then bent over and laid the microphone down on the in front of dax and like and now your turn to respond i challenge and, you to a verbal duel yeah well anyway he wasn't throwing the gauntlet down he was throwing the micro. No, he didn't throw it even. He said it gently, and he stood up. Well, here, your answer. And Dax, bear in mind, Dax and Cash have been standing there listening to whatever the fuck it was he just said. 
even though they've made this purposeful entrance and they just stood there and listened to this drivel. And then as Dax bends over to pick the microphone up, Buddy just fucking knee lifts him right in the fucking face. Boom, and down he goes and sells it. And they get in a fight with Cash, and they two-on-one him. And then Buddy grabs Dax in... I don't know, it looked... Just like a goddamn here, I'm just going to fucking pinch your face. I'm pinching your face. And stand behind you with your arm at an awkward position, and now you're completely immobile. Even though <laughs> you're a grown man, an ex-multi-time world tag team champion, you're completely immobile for quite some time and helpless while Malachi hits that fucking kick that... I don't know if he ever whips it, but there's a few that looks suspicious to me on the fucking stiff side. He hits his kick on Cash... And by the way, I wrote this is more awkward than it sounds. And then Buddy still has Dax, and Malachi Black gets the microphone and says, no one is coming for you about three times in a row while Dax is immobile being held down. And not even by a goddamn shoot hold by fucking... John Jones or Conor McGregor, but by a fucking one-handed chin grip or whatever by Buddy. He looked like he was in shock. What was that yeah, sound? He was, he was realizing, oh my God, how are we ever going to fucking survive being in the middle of this shit pile? <laughs> and then he hit Dax with the kick right in his fucking face. I think he had... Old Malachi had actually... Uh, it, I think it was Cash that he he stuck his foot out under Cash and picked him up with his leg like ah bam and then kicked him and they just kicked Dax while he was on his knees and they left them both laying there and they've not even uttered a fucking word FTR and what are you gonna say well boy we sure are suckers we should have kept Tully Blanchard he'd have told me not to bend over. By the way, important to note that FTR are clearly the baby faces while all this is happening. The fans start chanting House of Black. Yes. Because they've because they, they don't look like idiots in this. The, Tony has managed to turn his audience against almost every one of his baby faces and got him to cheer for almost every one of his heels. He's a fucking wizard. It's like you know, fuck that Bambi. Give that hunter an extra fucking couple of buckshot. So let me ask you this, just because it's preposterous to me, it's preposterous to you, obviously. To the people who don't understand it, to any of the fans saying, you guys don't get it. Now FTR get to get their revenge next time. There's a difference between needing <laughs> to make a comeback and just looking like complete shit for the you end. Have, yes, it's not just by by rote, by, you know, automatically, well, now the babyface gets his revenge and it will be good or comes back for revenge or whatever. You have to want to see someone get revenge. Someone has to deserve revenge. Someone can't be. You know, you, it, it, in the old cowboy movies, for fuck's sake, when the fucking outlaws came and burned John Wayne's ranch and raped his wife and killed his horse, well, that was totally uncalled for, and he was minding his own business, and by God, we know John Wayne, even though the wife and the Horse may not have been that tough. John's going to get even. Then you were on his side because that was the right side of the morality play. But now they're portraying their baby faces as these dipshits that don't lock their doors and fucking have signal flares. Hey, outlaws, come and rob me and rape my wife because I'm out of town and I'm an idiot anyway and nobody likes me and I'm an ineffectual prick. And then the outlaws come and they look cool because they got the wife and they burned the fucking ranch and they rode off with the horse. And what's that fucking dick going to do about it, John Wayne? The fuck? <clears throat> Does that make any sense? There are no strong baby faces. There's no, no there are no a bunch strong of people with the faces of babies, but nobody that looks like that you want to admire them and see them get even for a potential wrongdoing that has been done to them. Even if the wrestlers don't want to go to the bar, and plenty do, but even if some of the wrestlers don't want to go to the bar, the fans at home want to imagine that they can go to the bar and have a drink with their favorite wrestler. 
Yeah. Not, not go play video games. Well, so there are some fans, I guess, who want to go sit in their underwear and play video games with them, but I don't know why I said sit in their underwear, but I guess there are just some crazy fans out there is what I'm saying. But then there are other people who, the way they see a, a great ball player or but something. But I mean, you, you, don't, you don't even have to want to be a wrestler or a great ball player. If you're watching a movie, how many people want the fucking hero of the movie to be a dipshit that gets fooled and conned and taken advantage of all the time and then gets beaten up when he tries to do something about it? And, and ultimately, in some cases, in Tony's programs, doesn't get even in the end. Just moves on to let somebody else wipe their feet on him. And this isn't even the first time we've seen the whole no one's coming to save you thing. Didn't that happen to MJF? I mean, that's one of the things that sets up Samoa Joe. Well, yeah, but why is... FTR used to have friends, didn't they? They were baby faces. They dealt with... Besides Punk, is that... Okay, well, yeah, Punk's gone. He was your only friend. What the fuck? Why would... <sighs> But they were the baby faces, and they were... And it was two-on-two, two, by the way. Yeah. In a group with three people in it, the only two of them were there, and they beat the shit out of FTR completely ungoddamn contested two against two, so the odds were even. So again, I told you I thought you should see this, because when I saw this, I, <laughs> I couldn't believe... It just didn't make any sense, and I couldn't believe it got on the air, because I couldn't believe that some of the people involved wouldn't have said, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? We're not doing this. <laughs> I don't think that anybody, you know, wants to get the heat of saying, why would we do something like this on the show that they know that pretty much now that nobody's going to fucking watch. 